Uh, in this video, I'll show you a method that I use to disconnect an eGPU safely. So for context, uh, here's my setup. Uh, basically, I'm using the ROG LIX uh, with the ADT Link UT3G. I have also the RTX 4070 Super and a Cooler Master 550 Watt power supply. So why do I have this method that I want to show? Uh, reason because uh, I have been using the eject script and I find that the effectiveness was very inconsistent. Uh, when it works, it works very well. Uh, but there are times it's very frustrating that it does, doesn't work, right? Uh, I've tried multiple ways, you know, just checking the processes that use the eGPU, trying to end the task and so forth. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, you know, those just doesn't seem to work. If it cannot eject, uh, ultimately I have to shut down before disconnecting the eGPU or uh, eventually I need to face the blue screen of death. So that made me look into a different approach. I tried many, many ways. Uh, there are several third-party tools required, uh, namely things like the DEFCON and also the DEFMAN view. In the eject script, uh, it's using the DEF, DEF eject as well. All right. So the approach I'm going to show you here does not use any of the third-party tool. It only uses the following. Uh, basically, it's called a PMP util. Uh, this is actually included in every version of Windows Vista and later. So it should be within your own Windows version. You only need a notepad. You need a command prompt, I'll show you all this. And then finally, a task scheduler. And why you ask task scheduler, again, I'll show you that in my video. So some of the advantages, uh, basically, I've tried it many, many times just to see whether it's robust enough. And true enough, uh, I think it works very consistently. Uh, there's only one single action to enable and disable, like a toggle uh, itself. So in short, it's just a single mouse click. Uh, in addition, there's no Windows UAC, uh, which is basically the user account controls prom, uh, which requires manual intervention. So some of these actions uh, that you need to do, right, uh, through automation uh, will require administrative rights and then they'll do this UAC prompt, which defeats the purpose of whole automation. The other thing is that uh, I think, uh, theoretically, this method is graphics cards agnostic. It should work with AMD graphics cards too. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have an AMD graphics card to test, uh, but if you do try it out, uh, please give me your feedback below and uh, let the rest of the people know whether it works or not. Uh, and finally, it only requires two simple script files. Okay, now I'm just going to show you what you have to do. Uh, the first thing is the script. So this is a script. Basically, you only need two scripts. Uh, one is this, and the other one is this. I'm going to bring up my command prompt as well so that you can see side by side. Okay, so for the scripts, I actually stored all the scripts in a folder under C drive. Uh, I've created a folder called eGPU underscore scripts. Uh, it doesn't matter where you store the scripts, uh, you can just choose your own path and just save the files there. All right, for simplicity, I'm just going to show it here, uh, eGPU underscore scripts. Okay, now before I explain what the script does, uh, basically I'm going to bring out device manager. Okay, the script will actually automate the steps in device manager. What it will do is you'll look for the external GPU under the display adapters. Okay, and then if you were to right-click it, you can see there's an option to disable. So in the script itself, it will actually have a line item to say disable the device. By disabling the eGPU here, you can then safely uh, disconnect your physical cable uh, to your host device, which in my case is the LIX. Once you reconnect back, uh, it will detect here again and it will show, but it will be in a disabled state. So the script also will then automate to enable back this device uh, so that you can use back your external GPU. Uh, the other thing is that um, so while we are also in the device manager, uh, another important thing is we need to use the instance ID of this external GPU. So what you need to do is uh, right click on your external GPU, go to the properties, and then go to the details. Here you can see the different properties, uh, but the one we are interested in is actually called the device instance path. Uh, right click on the value that is shown, do a copy. Right, That's all we need from the device manager, and then we can minimize this. Okay, So in the script, uh, basically, the value that we have copied, we'll be replacing it in this line item here because this is actually the instance ID of your external GPU. It's unique uh, and it's according to each of your own devices, right? This would be the only thing you will need to change in this entire script. The rest of it, you should just follow as it is and not change anything else. Make sure to include the open and the closing double quote as well. This is important. Okay, now um, the script here, the important thing that you will be using is actually called a PMP util. All right, I'm just going to show you what that is. So PMP util is actually a utility uh, provided by Microsoft. Uh, you can get the uh, information here through the Microsoft documentation online. Okay, now coming back to the script, I'm going to explain the script so that you understand what exactly it's doing as well. Uh, first off, it's basically each of these uh, lines with the double colon, it signifies a comment or remark. 
the script will not execute lines with this double colon in front. Okay. Um, the first part that we'll be doing is actually initializing the variables. What we have done here is that I've defined three different variables, and two of those I've actually also defined the values for it, which is started and disabled accordingly. The status has no values, we'll leave it empty for now. Okay, uh, we spoke about earlier in terms of replacing the instance ID. So assuming once you have done, uh, this is where you should have your instance ID. Again, again this is unique to your uh, device. So you need to copy out from the device manager and replace it here. And this is the only thing you should replace in your script. All right, the next thing is that uh, we're just going to echo. Echo meaning is going to print out uh, some of these uh, statements to show you in the command prompt. Timeout is basically just going to do a pause for one second here before it continues on the remaining of the commands. Uh, here is where the first command that is important comes, right? Uh, PMP util basically is going to enumerate the device, uh, which is the display drivers that has that uh, instance ID that we copied over. So let me just run the script now, uh, just to show you. In that folder, I have these two scripts, the only two that we will really need. I'm going to run the first one, which is the long script that I've shown uh, behind here. Uh, the, the other one is actually the shorter one that I will show later. Okay. So this is the script I'm going to run. Okay. As you can see, basically when we run this line here to enumerate the device to show the instance ID of the external GPU, this is what will be shown. All right. What we'll be interested in is actually the status, which is currently in the started state. All right. Uh, because this instance ID is unique, all right, whenever we change the status later, uh, as we enable and disable the device, it will only affect this external GPU. It will not affect your internal uh, GPU itself. Okay. Uh, coming back to the script, the next thing we want to do is that uh, we want to loop through the output of this um, basically command itself. So because this is the output, it contains multiple lines. We want to loop through each line, all right? And this is using the for loop itself. So what it says here is that for each uh, line item, uh, what we're doing is we're going to basically assign each word as a token. So from here, basically there is three words. There are three words uh, in each line output, all right? Uh, I, I, sorry, this ampersand percent I is actually the variable that signifies the first word, and J is the second word. The third word will be K, all right? That's how it works. So we are searching that in each line, uh, if the status is same as started, which is here, what we'll do is that we'll set the status, which was initially blank, uh, to started. We'll do the same, all right, for the disabled part, right? Basically, we are searching is that when we have disabled the um, eGPU, we are looking for the word disabled, which was actually part of the variable we set earlier. If it's in the disabled state, then we will set the status to disabled. Uh, next, what we're going to do is that we're going to check whether the status is currently started or disabled, vice versa. Uh, if it's started, what we'll do is we'll disable it. Because logically, if it's started, I assume you want to disable it, right? Otherwise, if it's disabled, we want to re-enable it back, right? So it works like a, like a switch toggle itself. You can see when we run the script here, uh, it actually says failed to disable the device. Uh, Firstly, it has detected that it started and it tries to run uh, this line of code here to disable it. However, it's not successful because access is denied. Running any of this command to enable or disable the, the statuses requires administrative rights. Um, if you just run it through command prompt like that, it will not run. Right? Hence, they say access is denied. If you do want to see it run and want to test it out, you can actually go to command prompt and open up an instance that is run under the administrator access rights. Only then, if you were to run this batch, it will be successful. Okay, the other thing I've done is to create an event right here. Basically, we'll create an event in the uh, event logs of Windows. Uh, here, I'm actually just saying that the source is PMP util and what is the current status, the latest status uh, that we have actually changed to of the eGPU. And uh, in short, we're doing a, a logging, right? I'm going to show you here basically in our um, event viewer. Okay. Under Windows application, you will see entries like this. The source is PMP util, and then the general, basically the details are whatever we have uh, included. This is currently started. Okay, that's all. So this is just a simple locking to be done. Uh, finally, yes, uh, it's just going to say yes, done. And then it's going to do a pause of one second before it close off this whole uh, script itself. Uh, I've included you know, these several references uh, for which I've used to come out with the script here for reference. Now, the next script that we need to do is actually what we call the starting task script to start the task in the task scheduler. Uh, before we come to this, uh, I would like to explain why we need the task in the task scheduler. So I've already opened the task scheduler here. Okay. Uh, what we need to do is we need to create a basic task. 
give it a meaningful name. Let's say start, stop, and then just give it a description, right? Uh, go next. Select that you only want to run it one time. We don't want it to be running in a recurring fashion. Uh, leave the start and end time as it is. We don't have to change this. And then what action do you want to perform? Uh, choose start a program. Now here is where we want to point to the script that we have just written. Okay, there. So I'm going to choose the first one, enable and disable eGPU uh, dot bat. All right. So once that's done, go next. Okay, uh, towards the last part, make sure you check this, open the properties dialog for this task when I finish. And then click finish. Uh, why you want to do that is because you want to enable this run with highest privilege. Uh, the reason for this is that we are going to run it with administrative access. If you recall earlier, I said, you know, disabling or enabling the eGPU through the device manager requires administrative access. Uh, if you do not enable this, basically it's going to hit on the same issue as our command prompt where access is going to be denied. Okay, so this is all we need to do. Uh, once it's done, you just click OK. So that's the reason why we have the uh, task created in the task scheduler. It's really to run it under the administrative uh, access. Okay, so coming back to the next task. So this next, uh, or rather this next script uh, is actually to trigger that task that we have just created in the task scheduler. All right, this is a very simple script. Uh, again, the top part is just, you know, do a printout. It will say that it's running this task itself. And then this is the gist of the whole script itself. So this is a command, uh, basically scheduled task to run. Uh, this is the task name. This should actually reflect what was created. Here was uh, the old one that I've created. But right now, if you have to look at it, uh, we should have one that is basically enable, disable, underscore eGPU. So you should uh follow whatever name that you have just named your task earlier just now okay so this should be changed according to yours after that uh, what we need to do is just create a shortcut uh, let me just go to back to the script so this is the second script that we've created right it's really to trigger the task itself in the task scheduler if you just want to create a shortcut right click go show more options this is in windows 11 and then go prop um, send to send to the desktop to create a shortcut Okay, so once you have done that, let's just go there. And you can see that the shortcut is created here. These are all the old shortcuts that I've created for my own self, right? So this is the one you can just right click and then rename it accordingly. Uh, that's all we need. So what we need to do now is uh, to basically disconnect or reconnect your eGPU is just by clicking on this. I'm not going to do this now because by clicking so, it will disconnect my eGPU and then it will force my recording to stop. Make sure to save your scripts in the batch file format. Let's go to file, save as. At the bottom there, save as type, change it to all files. And then type in the name that you want and make sure to type in the extension .bat. That's all you need to do to save it as a batch file, right? For me, I'm going to cancel it. And if you're wondering what are these other scripts that I have open in my notepad, I'm going to quickly show you now. Basically, these are the individual scripts uh, to separately enable and disable the eGPU. So rather than having all of them in a long script, I've actually segregated them into two different scripts. And correspondingly, I have also two scripts to start the task to enable it and also to start the task to disable it. Um, this is not necessary, hence it's optional. Uh, but the reason I have this is because it's more of a contingency and a backup, right? Uh, so if you want to just start it, I can just press this. Uh, and on stop it, I can just press the other one if I choose to. Okay, again, it's not uh, mandatory. The other thing I have in terms of my setup is that I do use a Stream Deck Mini. I'm going to pull out the Stream Deck Mini software here now. Uh, and what I do is I map this uh, button to actually uh call the script to start the task so every time i press this uh it will either disable or enable the external gpu accordingly i also have the uh few mappings to stop and start the eGPUs for the optional scripts that i have uh, the other script that i did use previously is the eject script uh, if you're curious how it looks like 
the eject script is actually fairly simple. Um, okay, let me just go open it up for you. Okay, this is the one. So it only has one line item, which is uh, the bottom one to execute. Uh, it uses the tool called dev eject. So by using this and providing these input parameters, uh, basically you eject your external GPU. Again, like I said, um, it works sometimes and it doesn't work sometimes. So it's very inconsistent, right? And can be a bit frustrating when it doesn't work. Hence, I stopped using this. Uh, lastly, you may also want to consider this. So I have actually set my display settings whereby when I connect my eGPU, I'll only show on the second screen. I will not extend nor will I duplicate it uh, because I do not use the small screen built in the LIX when I connect to the external GPU. So when I choose uh, show only on two, uh, basically when I connect it and I enable it through the script, it will just show it on my big screen. Uh, similarly, if I were to disable it through the script, uh, the big screen will actually go black and then uh, it will then fall back into the LIX screen. Now I'm going to show you what happens when I run the script through my stream that we need. Uh, at the moment, my external display is showing while my LIX screen is disabled. Okay, let's run the script. As you can see, it has now changed to this side. And if I were to check, you will see that my external GPU now has an option to enable the device. Okay, let's pull the cable out. See, all is still working fine. Let's disconnect it back. Okay, now that it has reappeared in the device manager, when I press this to run the script again, you will now display to my external display. You actually don't have to open up the device manager to wait for the external GPU to show back up in the device manager before you run the script to start the task. Uh, I'm just showing it to you. You actually just need to give it a couple of seconds before you run the script to start the task again, and then it should just enable it and uh, you know ex uh, display in the external uh, display itself like mine. Uh, I have actually taken quite some time to do research uh, and also a lot of trial and errors and to really simplify the script as what I've shown you. So I hope that this is uh, informative and you know, some of you may find this useful and I hope it's also going to be helpful for you all. Thank you.